guys, it is our last nib video. And today we're taking a look, whoa, at a Tachikawa spoon nib, if I can get it out. And this is indeed a nib for drawing. Superior Tachikawa made in Japan. So this should fit in the Tachikawa nib holder. <gasps> yep, like they were made for each other. Today we're gonna be inking on the Inktober 2016 Danik sketchbook. I bring this up, not because I am a fan, but as a warning, I actually do not care for this paper, but I am trying to use up what I have. And if I feel the paper is causing problems with the nib, which has happened in the past, I will state so grabbing a little piece of scratch paper. The ink we're gonna be using for today's test is FW Acrylic Ink in Payne's Gray. Ooh, this one is a fine and flexi nib. So let's go ahead and get started very smooth on the paper surface. Fair amount of flex, a uh, little more flexible than the Kuretake Seiji nib, which is another Japanese spoon nib. Less flexible than the Tachikawa G nib, which is another drawing and inking nib made by Tachikawa. I have a cat forcing his way into my lap, so that's gonna affect my ability to carry line weight. I am pressing somewhat hard into the paper in order to get some flex. This is a slight flex nib, not a whole lot of flex to it. However, the nib is not cutting into the paper, unlike some of the other nibs we have tested. I am putting down a fair amount of ink with my flexins, so I will probably need to give it a couple of minutes to dry, to evaporate, or to soak into the paper. This might be a nib that if you want to use it for comic pages, you use a quick drying ink. I believe Deleter makes some specifically for that purpose. After all, manga cut run on really tight deadlines. So they probably need smear proof ink. It's an easy inker. Easy to manage, easy to work with. Holds a decent amount of ink. Can take a decent amount of pressure without biting too much into the paper. Of course, like any pointed pen nib, if you run wet into wet too often, you'll end up tearing up the paper. And that's common for just any pointed pen nib, really. So it is something you're gonna wanna be aware of if you're new to inking. And I'm whipping through this a little faster than I would recommend with dip pen inking, dip nib inking 
it does help to take your time can even go backwards with this nib, which is more useful than you probably realize. You only realize how much you miss it when you can't do it. All right, so I actually really like this nib. I think I might use it instead of the Kuratake Seiji nib when I'm looking for a nice spoon nib that can be delicate, because this is a good one. So, gotta write the name down and then we're just about done. Tachi Kawa. Spoon nib. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't yet, I have done a few other nib reviews this Inktober. I recommend you check those out, especially if you're just getting in to dip pins and you're looking for some good recommendations. I also have a nib overview video and a nib cleaning video that will help you get the most out of your nibs and help you pick the nibs that are right for you which hopefully saves you some money since you're not spending it on nibs that aren't right for you. If you are looking for more inking tutorials, head on over to my Inktober 2017 playlist, my Inktober Art Snacks playlist from last year, and my Advanced Inking Technique playlist. There should be plenty to ink about on those playlists. I have even more inky information over at natosoup.blogspot.com and I've been sharing my Inktober illustrations at instagram.com slash natosoup. So thank you again for watching. If you have any questions or if there's a particular nib you'd like to see me review, let me know in the comments down below. And I hope you guys have a great day. Go on and get inky guys. Bye.